Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, the Iron Curtain has been down for quite some time now, but things haven't changed for everybody. For years, the Iron Curtain, which was actually a fence like the one in the up, picture in the upper left-hand corner, separated two populations of red deer living in the forests. Uh, one population in Germany and the other population of deer in what is now the Czech Republic. Now when the government officials began to dismantle this fence in 1989, which was around the same time that the Berlin Wall happened to fall, this physical barrier uh, between those two populations was removed. But when the wildlife biologists began studying the deer in 2002, they quickly realized that the deer that were living in Germany were not migrating into the Czech Republic, and the deer that were in the Czech Republic were not migrating into Germany. In other words, both populations of deer were still behaving as if the fence still remained intact. There was one particular deer that they named a hornia, uh, which was kind of a microcosm of, of this whole uh, population. And, and as you can see, they put a little bit of a, a, a around the neck one of these GPS units where they can track uh, these deer. And they tracked this deer for several years. And uh, during the, the years of tracking, they identified 11,000 times when she was in Germany. You know how many times she was in the Czech Republic? Zero. Several times uh, the deer had come up and, and was tracked right up to the edge, right to the border, but not once did the deer cross over into the other territory. Now, what's absolutely amazing about this fact is the fact that this deer was born 18 years after the wall had been removed. So this particular deer had no physical memory of the fence's existence. And even greater than that was, is the area in the Czech Republic was turned into a large nature Preserve. And so the area across the, the way actually was a haven. It was the perfect place for a deer to live. And yet she did not enter it. The biologists are baffled, and there's no clear biological reason to explain this, but I share it this morning because it creates a great image for us today on how some walls never fall. That was the, Paul, that, that was the, uh, the problem that Paul was struggling with with the Ephesians in our second reading this morning. Uh, Paul is writing to the Christian church at Ephesus, and apparently this church had Christians of both Jewish descent and Gentile descent. And they were not getting along. It was not just an issue of merely them coexisting together. Rather, there was actually active antagonism between and hostility between the two groups. Um, and to remove the dividing walls was no small feat. And this shouldn't be too surprising considering the covenant history of Israel because Israel, throughout the whole Old Testament, were told to stay away from the Gentiles. Don't marry them. Stay away from them because if you do, you're going to get involved with their gods and, stop wor and start worshiping false gods. So basically, stay away from them. So it's not surprising that there was a little bit of friction between them, but after all these many, many, many years of history, and we talked in our Bible study this morning, our, our country has been, the United States has only been here for a couple, a little over a couple hundred years, but yet you're talking a, a, a nation that had history for, for hundreds to a few thousand years, and, uh, and throughout that whole history, they, were, they remained separated from the Gentiles, and, 
now they are joined together in the same church. And, uh, and even though the wall has been removed, no one was crossing over this former border. When you look at the history of this division, the Israelites were historically on God's side. The Gentiles, they were the ones who were uncircumcised. They were strangers and aliens of this, uh, from this far off, and they were far off um, from Israel and the covenant promises that had been made to Israel. And so they are not close to God like the Jews were in the covenant. So the Gentiles, as a result, they were without hope because they were without God in the world. And so in our reading today, Paul reminds them of where they came from. Verse 11, he says, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, the, the Jews. So you, by the Jews, you were called the uncircumcision, uh, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, now that the new covenant has been established on Monday, Thursday, under this new covenant, people from all nations have access to God and to his forgiveness. And so Paul reiterates that in verse 13. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. And he did this by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God and in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And so these two factions are warring, and Paul offers to both of these peace. Verse 17, he says, peace. He offered peace to you who are far off, the Gentiles, and peace to those who are near you, the Jews. And so where does this peace come from? Well, that, uh, let's go back and look at verse 14 because it tells us, for he himself, Jesus, is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility that he might create in, in himself one new man in place of the two. So what Paul is saying is these two groups who are warring with each other both have a connection to Jesus Christ. And it is through that common connection with God and, and, with, and with Jesus that they can make and should make peace with each other. I think many of you have, might, might have been in this situation, a very good friend where you've grown up and very good, good buddies. And, and they go and introduce you to one of their friends. And so what's, what's your expression? Well, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. And in essence, that same principle holds here. Any friend of Jesus should be a friend of ours. And that is what Paul is sharing with this sparring group at Ephesus, that in Christ we are all one and we should get along. Now for many of us here today, uh, it's easy to point fingers and it's hard to understand why they couldn't get along and, 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 and why it was so difficult for this to happen and how strong these divisions actually were. So this morning, I'd like for us to maybe think of it in a little different light. Let's think of it today as us versus Muslims or, or Arabs. 
okay? In today's world, there is a natural mistrust between Muslims and non-Muslims, especially in airplanes. In fact, um, Juan Williams, who was a commentator for uh, Fox News, uh, used to work for NPR, and on, on the air he admitted that, that he was intimidated and was afraid whenever he got on an airplane and saw an Arab, and he was uh, actually fired from his job for making um, that particular statement. But studies have been made which actually show that we have a natural mistrust for people who speak a different language. And the more different that language is, the more natural mistrust there is with that people group. Of course, the mistrust is going to be even much more severe when this people group happens to fly airplanes into your skyscrapers. So there, there may be a little bit more to the, uh, to the situation uh, than just the language. But let's apply this message of Paul to us today. Paul's message to the Ephesians would hold true to us. Uh, even with some of these people groups today where there is a significant